Yes, um, yes. Happy, happy man today. How are we feeling? Yeah. We've been less than three nil. Very happy with that first half performance. Um, I thought, I thought it was uh, brilliant in the sense of, um, in terms of how good we were when we took our chances. Obviously, that's the Harry Kane factor because this guy, this guy is phenomenal goal scorer, and nobody can deny that. Leicester, Leicester had their chances, to be fair, and we've got a lot to thank for Hugo Lloris on that because Ayo Perez um, almost scored. And I think there was a goal from Vardy as well, but Ben Davis did a put a shift in marking him. And that could have easily been, in this first half, Leicester could have easily got two goals in. The question, the answer really is, which team was the one that maximised their chances? And that was Tottenham. And that was pretty much the story of the first half. And then the second half, you know, unlucky to get the fourth goal, I think, when Son tripped over. But we, we defended so well. And um, that is pretty much the game in a nutshell. So do you think um, in the first half, uh, we deserve to be 3-0 ahead? It was just a case of us taking our chances and Leicester not. Because I felt like we probably, I think, created more clear-cut chances than Leicester in the first half. And most of, I know Ayozi Perez had a decent chance, but... That was mostly from like a um, it was from, it was from a, vo- a volley, which w- which would have been a good goal if it would have gone in. And apart from that, did Leicester create too many chances? Well, they were whether they were clear cut chances or not. There was still a there was still a risk where we could have um, conceded. Um, you talk about Io Perez. I, I I disagree. I thought it would have been a fantastic goal, but it was stopped because Hugo Lloris pulled a fantastic save. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that. Honestly, that was an absolute phenomenal save and that could have changed the game around completely. Um, as for Jamie Vardy, you know, it was a set piece from a corner and, and I thought we were going to be conceding from one of those. Although, interestingly, we've only apparently conceded three goals from a corner, which doesn't feel right. But It doesn't that, feel right, no. We always feel, that, feel, I always feel very nervous when score. we concede a corner. Oh, no, interesting. Yeah. Um, so, no, actually, I feel like it is down to Tottenham taking their chances. Because this is huge. this is um, Jose Mourinho's um, style of play, you know, defend but counter attack when the opportunity is there, and we took those opportunities in, and that was the best I've ever seen of it with uh, Tottenham versus Leicester. And you think we're now starting to really get to grips with how Jose likes to play? Do you think we're now st- starting to see his tactics like really um, born out on the pitch, as opposed to you know, there's always talk of he's too defensive, we don't attack enough. Um, and uh, whether whether we're going to get goals uh, under under Jose, but do you think today was like a blueprint? We're definitely getting a taste of what Jose Mourinho can offer us as a manager with tactics wise. But as I've said in this interview in the last interview, um, all we've got so far is a taste of it. And um, as I've said before, this isn't the squad that we can carry on with next season. This is a squad at the moment trying to help us finish off on a high. But if we really want to see more of that of that style of football that we saw today, then we, yeah, what we need to do is um, get the checkbook out, Levy. But will he do that? Well, we it looks like we're going to get Hoiberg. That looks quite likely. Um, it looks like potentially that this Korean centre uh, centre back as well we're put in for. Um, but how, how much more investment do we need in this team? Well, um, personally, I'm not too happy with Hoiberg. Like um, every, like um, you've also got to listen to what fans have to say about him, and a lot of um, Southampton fans are saying that um, you know have him. Well, not a lot, but I've seen some comments saying have him, take him. Saw some similar comments about Ndombele. Funnily enough, some tweets that I dug out from ages and ages ago of some French Marseille Olympic Lyon fans. Sorry saying that they don't really want to see the guy anymore, so take him by all means. Same with Sessegnon as well. Um, we need we need a lot of players to... And look, I understand completely that we're not a checkbook football club and we're not going to like sign, you know, world-class players, that's for sure. But we need to make quantity of signings that can help fill the gap of the deficit of a squad depth that we have I would say um the transfer window of the summer obviously was not enough you know signing La Celso Ryan Sessegnon and on uh you lose um you lose Kieran Trippier Fernando Laurent uh, sorry sorry my words Lorente and then um yeah 
Like we need to actually, we, when we make a signing or two or three or however many, once we make that signing, we can't take steps backwards. And that's what was the, that was pretty much what was summed up in the summer when it came to signings. The squad depth is a huge issue. And that's why we struggled a lot this season because, you know, we just don't have replacements and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't want to like talk too much on this because, um, you know, it's, it's a good game today. And um, we need to just carry this on and make sure that we don't finish seventh. Yeah, how would what would you, what do you think our chances are looking like at the moment? We're in sixth. Obviously, Wolves have a game in hand. They got Palace, and then the final day of the season, Wolves play um, Chelsea, and we play Palace. Uh, so Palace obviously have a big say, big uh, <laughs> going to have a big say in who finishes in Europa League. But I'm not worried about are that. You confident? Are you confident? Mate, you I, I, yeah, yeah, I know what you said. Um, yeah, I don't think um, Palace will beat Wolves, but Jesus Christ, do we actually have to start relying on Chelsea? Yeah, Chelsea to beat Wolves. This is why I hate, I've hate. i hated this season so much. It's bad enough that, you know, at the back of my head, celebrating someone in my head was saying, well, you're just doing Chelsea a favour and stuff like that. Um, I'm At the moment, it's all down to us. What, whatever happens, we need to win our remaining games. And, you know, all we can do is just rely on Wolves and Crystal, uh, not Wolves, um, rely on Crystal Palace and Chelsea. Um, hate to say this, and I don't want to say this on camera, but FA Cup final, yeah. We won't <laughs> we won't go on about that because I'm just still trying to take the horrors of last night out of my head. We all are. We all are. That was, uh, it was definitely hard to watch. But hopefully, hopefully they won't win it. And hopefully we will finish it anyway, regardless. But it's going to be quite annoying because I think um, if we finish seventh, um, and that and that becomes an FA and that becomes a Europa League spot. Then we have to pay three qualifiers apparently next in the, in the ne- next year next season for the Europa well, League. Well, let's let's all go to um, Serbia, um, <laughs> Azerbaijan. Yeah, oh no, wait, we can't. <laughs> Mood instantly destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, are you confident going into next season that we can build on this little run we've had? This um, a bit of momentum. Like, like, like I said, um, this this momentum is just purely temporary. We can't. I've said this before. Say this again. We cannot carry on relying on this current squad. So this is down. This is down to what the board do in the summer. You know, are we going to try and be a little bit ambitious? You know, maybe maybe it's time that we have to we have to lower our standards slightly. Maybe mm-hmm. personally, I don't want to go for that. But if we do. And, you know, we're going to try and contend for Europa League should we qualify for it without any of these um, qualifiers or relying on, um, you know, what happens in the FA Cup final. We need to we need to act like we want to win that Europa League by showing some ambition, get some signings in, f- try and fix the gaps at least in the depth of, of the deficit that we have. And then I'll be happy to look forward to next season. What do you think of uh, Lucas Moura today? Another another two assists for him. Um, he, again, another display where he seems to uh, have really turned a corner in his form. He seems to actually contributing now uh, further up the pitch. Um, do you think it was another step in the right direction for him? And do you feel like if he carries on this form, he could be a different player next season? He's, he's been very hit and miss, to be fair, with Lucas Moura. I'm, I'm definitely happy, like you, as you pointed out, about how he's been. Um, I... A lot of Spurs fans are saying, well, no, not a lot, but people have said, you know, we should sell Lucas Mora. I don't think we should personally because I feel like, you know, Mora, Mora has still got something to be a part of this plan or project, you know, whether he can be on the bench as a depth used for squad depth or start first team as he did today. I, I was impressed with what I saw um, with Lucas Mora. You know, he took, he took a slight little injury from um, one of Leicester's youth players, but carried on and um really yeah he really took the game apart so i'm happy with the way he played and how he's been playing lately all right well sam always good to have you on man always thank good. you come on you Spurs. especially after a win come on you Spurs. after a win yes come on